Matthew chapter 16. And I want to uh, read from verse 15. Where the Bible says, Jesus, he said to them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Verse 18, And I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'll give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Father, I thank you even now for your word that your Holy Spirit will take control even now. I submit myself, my, my thoughts, my mind, my spirit to you, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to let Jesus be glorified today. Let Jesus be lifted up today in our lives. Make us stronger than ever. So that, God, we can fulfill our assignment and purpose that you've called us to. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Amen. God be praised. Now, the Bible says here, that Jesus, having asked his disciples who he is, what people are saying and what they have to say concerning who he is. He then declared after Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus then declared, Upon this world you are Peter. Thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, I want to say something to us today, and that is, first of all, that Jesus is in the building business. He said, I will build my church. God is in the building business. God is not in the breaking business. He's in the building business. Amen. Amen. God is a builder. And God always seeks to build. Anything that is broken, God is the builder. He can fix it. He can, he, he can construct it and put it back together. Because our God is a builder. Hallelujah. God is always seeking to build lives and build things. The devil is a breaker, a destroyer. Amen. Always seeking to destroy and, and, and tear down. But God is a builder. The Bible actually says that when Jesus, when, when uh, Judas betrayed the Lord and, and he sold the Lord out for 30 pieces of silver. Interesting, the Bible declares that that um, after Judas realized what he had done, he took those 30 pieces of silver and he came back to the priest, the high priest, and, 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 and the guys in the temple and he threw down the 30 pieces of silver. And he said, I betrayed innocent blood. And, and the priest at that time, they, they said, what are we going to do with this money? That Judas, he betrayed the Messiah, he betrayed the Christ. What are we going to do? It's blood money, they said. What are we going to do with this money? And then someone said, let's take that 30 pieces of silver and let's buy the potter's field. Now what was the potter's field? And this is what they said. They said, let's purchase the potter's field because it's the price of blood. And what was the potter's field? The potter's field was a field that the, the, the potters would, when they have broken vessels, when they have vessels that were marred and they couldn't use, they would 
take those vessels, broken vessels, and marred vessels, and they will dump them in the potter's feet. So the potter's field was a field that was filled with broken vessels. And Judas' money, the price he paid, they, the high priest and them, they paid for the life of Jesus, 30 pieces of silver. That 30 pieces of silver, which was equal to the life of Jesus according to Judas and the others. It purchased the potter's field. And they even said, it is the price of blood. In other words, here's it. Jesus' life was given for a potter's field. A field of broken vessels. Because that's what God is about. God is about building, about taking vessels that are broken and repair them. Amen. That is why the Bible says when the, when the woman uh, that was caught in adultery, and they brought her to Jesus and they said, they said, Master, uh, uh, this lady, we caught her in the very act. She ought to be stoned to death and be killed and be destroyed. Her life is supposed to be snuffed out because of what she had done. What did Jesus say? He said, neither, he said to the woman, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Because God is in the building business. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's building lives. Anybody, there is hope for, for everybody and anybody when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, I will build my church. Now, what is he building? Uh, when I began talking about this, I said there are three uh, main factors here. One, there is the builder. Two, there is the built. And thirdly, there is the battle. That's what we see in this text. When Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. First of all, he says, I will build, so he's the builder. And he says, you need to know who I am. That's right. And then, who's the built? The church is the built. I will build my church. Amen. So the church is the built. And what is the church? The church is the people of God, the call out God's people. Amen. What is God involved in? God is involved in building lives. God is involved in building people. Amen. Amen. And so when he calls us and we give our lives to him and we surrender to him, from that moment he begins to build us. He began to work on us to make us strong, to make us better, to make us, uh, amen, if you will, invincible, on, so that we will not be defeated, that the gates of hell cannot prevail against us, invincible. And that's what Paul said, you are more than conquerors. That's, that's through Christ. That's what God is building. He's building an army of people that are invincible, that cannot be defeated. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody said to yourself, I cannot be defeated. Amen. Amen. Say, I cannot be defeated. Amen. And say, I will not be defeated. Be defeated. Amen. What, who makes a difference? Jesus does. Hallelujah. He says, I will build my church, e e ecclesia, my called out ones. Now, how is he building us? He says, upon this rock, that's what he told Peter, when he said, Peter, he said to the twelve, whom do you say that I am? And then Peter, by the inspiration and revelation of God the Father, he declared, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus declared, upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon that confession that you have made concerning who I am. Based on who I am, I am going to build my church. Amen. So we are being built upon the rock, Jesus Christ. He says, upon this rock. Now, we need to understand this because this is important. This is what makes us invincible. This is what makes us, amen, we're weak. we just can't be defeated. Oh, hallelujah. You might say, but pastor, you say, well, I cannot be defeated and we will not be defeated, but, but, but I fail now and again. I, I, you know, I mean, and there are people in the Bible, even those who belong to the church that, that failed. Peter, Peter, he denied the Lord three times. And you say, 
the, the, the dominant principle that cannot be defeated. You see, defeat, defeat is, is when you are not down and you stay down. Amen. Victory and being victorious don't mean that you're not going to be knocked down. Being on defeated doesn't mean that, 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 that you might not have a slip or a fall. What undefeated means that even when I'm knocked down, I get up again. Once you're on your feet, you're not defeated. You're only defeated when you're on your back lying down and you stay there. So Jesus said, I'm, I'm, I'm building my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. I'm building you and the gates of hell will not prevail against you. I'm building this ministry and the gates of hell will not. Not only not going to have some setbacks. Come on somebody. But my Lord, we're not going to allow the setback to, to knock us down where, where we said we give up. Amen. Once you're not giving up and you got fighting you, you are undefeated. My church, but I'm building it. You got to understand, Amen. You said I'm going to build it on me, Jesus. When he says upon this rock, the, the 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 Greek word for rock there is Petra, and it means a a large stone. It also means a foundation stone. So when he said to Peter, upon this rock. I will build my church. He's saying that this, that, 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 that what he's building here is built on a rock or foundation stone, which is himself. He's, he's the rock. He's the foundation stone. Massive rock. That's what it means. And we are being built upon him. And that's why it's important for us to know, to know the Lord. That's why he began the conversation when he said to them, whom do men say I am? And then whom do you say I am? Because it's important for us, uh, and that's what I talked about last week, you got to know him, that for us to know him. That's right. And who, listen to this. In, when he said to them, whom do men say I am and whom do you say I am? When he said that, in, it, it is written in the imperfect tense. Meaning that, that it, it, it the idea there is he is it must constantly he be repeated in a sense of of, of, of um, the question is constantly asked. That's the idea. That this question has to be asked constantly, over and over and over and over and over again. Whom do you say I am? 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 In other words, we have to constantly be asking ourselves the question: Who is he? What does he mean to me? Who is our God? And we have to constantly be reminding ourselves as to who he is. Come on, somebody. You have to constantly remind yourself concerning who he is. Because sometimes we forget. When you're in trouble, you forget that he is the one who, amen, who is our present help in the time of trouble. Amen. Sometimes we forget he's the healer. Come on, somebody. Sometimes we forget he's the deliverer. Sometimes we forget he's the provider. And so we have to constantly remind ourselves as to who he is. Because he's the foundation. We are rooted. Here's what the Bible says in our Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 6, the word of God says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Colossians 2 6. Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So what is Paul the apostle saying here? He is saying that as we have received Jesus, let us be rooted and built up in him. Yes. In other words, let him be the foundation. Yes. Send your root down into Jesus. You can't send your root into your husband or your wife. They can feel you. You can't send your root down in the government. The government can feel you. You can't send your root down into politicians.
conditions, they can fail you. You can't even send your roots down in the pastor. He can fail you. You send your roots down into the Lord Jesus Christ because he will never fail. So my connection and my hookup in life is on Jesus. He is my foundation. If Jesus is your foundation, you can never be defeated. If the church is built, if the local church is built on Jesus, some local churches are built on the worship. Some local churches are built on the music. Christians in the church, you know what I mean? They're hooked up there because of the music. They're hooked up because of the preaching. They're hooked up because of, of a nice building. Because of, 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 you know, the prestige or denomination. And that's how they're hooked up. But we must hook up on Jesus. Come on, is somebody here with me? Amen. You got to hook up on Jesus. You got to send your roots down in here. Amen. Let him be the foundation of your life. Let him be the foundation of my life. He must be my foundation. He must be the one in which I'm, who I'm rooted in because if I believe in him, if I put my trust in him, if I depend on him, if I, my life is based on him, he's the center and the circumference of my life, then I cannot and will never be defeated. Amen. Upon this rock I will build my church upon myself, upon Petra. I'm going to build my, build, build my church. Hear what the Bible says here in, uh, um, in, in um, okay, I, I, I don't have that scripture here, but it says, it actually says, yes, there it is, in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 6, here's what it says. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Amen. Meaning, he that believeth on him, if you believe in you, send your roots in, in, into Christ. Look what happens. It says, it says you will not be confounded. And the word confounded, it means you are not going to be put to shame. That's right. Meaning that God will not fail you. He will never fail. Amen. So if I depend on him, if he is my foundation, he will never fail me. I'm going to come through every time. God will come through for me every time. Amen. That's why I said you can't put your foundation on somebody else or... Or, 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 or something else, amen, some people, or your, your employee, or, or your job, that's not your security, Jesus is your security. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now he says, he says to Peter, watch this, he said, Peter, thou art Peter, and upon this rock. Now when he says, at that point, when he says, thou art Peter, at that moment he's changing the name of Peter. His name before was Simon. And now Jesus is changing his name and calling him Peter. And Jesus actually said, from today, you are going to be called Peter. Because you are Peter. Because he just identified the Lord. He said, you are the Christ. Now Jesus says, now I'm going to identify you. And I'm going to tell you, you are Peter. From today, because I'm about to do something with you. And, and the Lord says, from today, you are going to be called Peter. Now, Peter means, the word Peter means little stone. Little stone. Little stone. And Jesus said, from today, you're going to be a little stone. The, the, the Greek word is Petros. Petros. Meaning a little stone. Remember Jesus says upon this rock, Petra, large stone, foundation stone. Now Peter, you are a little stone. From today, Simon, you, you're going to be a stone, a little stone. And then, thou art Peter, stone, upon this rock, I'll build my church. What is all of that? The Lord, this church, called out once the people of God. This whole thing that God is building, he's building it with stones everywhere. The foundation is stone, a large rock, who is Christ the rock. 
And then the people that he's building it with, they're all stones. They're all stones. Let me tell you something. When you come to Christ, you, you, you're, you're tough. You're a stone. Now, the same Peter, who the Lord called a stone, and said, you are a stone from now and then. Upon this rock, I build my church. You are a stone. Upon this rock, I build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know why the gates of hell can't prevail? Because the devil dealing with stones. He dealing with tough people. Christ is, is, is a large rock. And then, then Jesus got a lot of other little rocks and little stones. We are tough. You know, a stone is, is hard. Amen. Come on, somebody. A stone is hard. Amen. It's not stone, it's not soft. It's tough. And the Lord says, I'm building my church with tough people. Because of St. Peter, who said, Who? Who the Lord called a stone. Peter declared this. Watch this. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Peter declared this. He said, You also. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. A holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You also, he says, are lively stones. You also. Remember what the Lord said to him. You are Peter. You're a little stone. Now Peter is writing to the church. Amen. Jesus said, Peter, you're a stone. And then Peter is writing to the church. And he's saying, hello church, you also. I'm a stone and hello, you're also a stone. You also as lively stones. That's right. Are built up a spiritual house. We, and what am I saying? Jesus, we, we are stones, folks. You are tough. You are tough. Amen. You might not know it, but, but you're tough. You're strong. You're not a weakling. That's what the Bible says. Let him that says, let, let the weak say, I'm strong. You are strong. Oh, Pastor, I don't know. I think I can make it. Things are, amen, everything is piling on me. I, I don't think I can make it. I'm a softy. You're not a softy. Come on now. Amen. Ever since I've been growing up, everyone is taking advantage of me, Pastor. I'm a crybaby. I like to cry. I like to feel sorry for myself. Not when you come to Christ. When you come to Christ, you're a stone now. You're no more what you used to be. Because the church is filled with stones. That's why the gates of hell can't prevail against us. We are tough, man. Amen. Somebody say, I'm, I'm tough as it gets. Amen. Amen. Nobody can take advantage of me. Nobody can walk all over me. Circumstances can't bottom me here and there. Amen. I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand in the middle of the storm. Amen. And I'm not going to go down. I'm going to come through the storm. Yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I'm going to walk through the valley, man. Amen. Because I'm God. I'm a stone. I'm not a weakling. I'm a child of God. Amen. 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 He said, I'm building my church. My church is filled with stones. You are Petrus, a stone, Peter. And Peter says, it's not just me alone as a stone. You also is lively stones. Amen. Children of God, you're a stone. You're tough. I'm tough. That's why we're getting through this pandemic fine. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're going to get through your hardships all right. Yeah. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It might take a little time for you to get through over on the other side. But one thing you know for sure, you're getting over. On the other side. The church is going to go through. They don't care what the devil threw at us. He tried, he tried, and the gates of hell tried. Now, now look what Jesus said. He said, Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, I want you to notice this. Right? That the gates of hell, the idea here 
is that because I'm being built by God and I'm a child of God and I belong to the church of Jesus Christ, I'm on the move. The idea is the church is on the move. Come on. Amen. We don't stand still. No matter what is going on, we're on the move. We've got an agenda. We've got an assignment. We've got a purpose. Amen. We are pursuing divine destiny. We are pursuing the purposes of God for our lives. We are pursuing the blessings of God and everything that God has in store for us. We are on the move. The church is on the move. The people of God is on the move. No child of God stands still. We are always on the move. That's the idea. Jesus said, you watch my church. You watch my people. They are on the move. And then as we are on the move, what happens? The gates of hell tries to stop us. The role of the devil, the way Jesus sees the devil and the powers of darkness is not them attacking us. Are, are you all hearing? Yes. <laughs> Many of the children of God, we, we are on the defense. We are the, you know, you hear people say, man, I'm being battered. Pastor, pray for me. You know, all hell is against me, and, and I left, right, center, and attacks everywhere, and, and I'm, I'm trying to hold on in. You know, like the, the old uh, um, um, hymn, I, I mean, you know, some hymns are great, but, but this one that said, you know, hold the fort, for I am coming, Jesus signals still. Wave the answer back to heaven, by thy grace, I believe it is, we will. You're not, the idea here is not holding the fault. Where I'm just trying to hold on while the devil is battering me. He's coming after me. It's not he coming after you. You're on the move. That's what Jesus is saying here. Because the gates of hell, watch this. The gate speaks of, of a city, right? Yes. So it means I'm going and then here I am, I come to a city. From hell. With gates and everything. And watch this now. There's the gates of hell. There's the city of the devil. I'm on the move. You see, because once you're moving with God, you're going to encounter demons. You're going to encounter the devil. That's how the battle is initiated. Because I'm on the move. If, if I'm on the receiving end of stuff, then I'm in the wrong spot, in the wrong place. Amen. That's not where I'm supposed to be as a child of God. I'm on the move. And I encounter this, this, this territory, demonic territory, this demonic city, if you will. And then there I go. And Jesus says, now that city will not prevail against you. Meaning you're going to overrun that city. You're going to knock that down and you're going to continue to march. And you're going to continue to move. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. They will not be able to stand up against you. But the devil will constantly put stumbling blocks along the way of our path to try to stop us. What is the devil seeking to do? To stop you. That's what it's all about. To prevent you from getting in to what God has for you. Amen. Yes. Getting into your purpose, getting into your healing, your miracle, whatever. That's what you're trying to stop you. And the devil's job is to try to stop us. Yes. That's what he's doing. Amen. But Jesus says you're not going to be defeated because the gates of hell will not prevail against you. They're not going to be able to stop you. Somebody said, nothing is going to stop me. Nothing is going to stop me. Amen. I'm going to fulfill my purpose. Amen. I'm going to fulfill my dream. I'm going to fulfill my vision. Amen. That God's put in my heart. Now remember, the only thing, you can't pursue your own stuff. Once you're involved in pursuing God's stuff, God's vision, God's heart, God's purpose, God's desires, the things that concern the Lord, whatever, whatever God's put in your heart, all of those things, amen, no devil in hell will be able to stop you. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. The gates of hell. Now, now, uh, 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 as I, as I, as I bring this to a close, look what it says. 
the gates. The Bible, Jesus specifically, he, he didn't talk about the city because the gates of the city was the most potent part of the city. The walls and so meant nothing. If you storm the gates, then you have the city. That's right. And gates there, because in those days, in the cities that they had in those days, the government, the local government, would sit at the gates to make this uh, make decisions. They would plan and make designs and and and, and schemes and 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 and. and and, uh, and uh, whatever else decisions are made, they are made, judgments, etc. They were judged at the gate. By the way, that's why, you know, in the story of, of Solomon Gomorrah, when, when, when uh, uh, the angels went into the city, where did they find Lot? They find Lot at the gate of the city. That's what the Bible said. Meaning that Lot was one of the leaders in the city of Sodom, Lord help me. He was one of the, the, the top guys there in leadership in the city. Because Gates speaks of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, of counsel, it speaks of, of planning, yeah, because that's where those kinds of things occur. The city council would meet at the gate of the city. So what is the Lord saying? When the Lord says the gates of hell will not prevail against you. The Lord is saying, you see the devil is always plotting and always scheming and always trying to think of some way to get you. Amen. Some design. Always seeking to design some stuff in order to bring you down. He's always plotting your downfall. Why? To stop you. To prevent you from fulfilling your purpose. To prevent you from realizing your potential. From, to prevent you from, from, from moving forward with God. That's why he's fighting. Amen. He's trying to, to prevent the church from getting into all that God has for it. And so he's always plotting and scheming. Well, here's what the Lord says. And here's news for the devil. Jesus said, no plot, no scheme, no design from him is going to prevail against you. Amen. No matter what the devil comes up with, it's not going to work. Somebody says it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because the gates of hell, all the plotting, all the scheming, all the planning, is not going to work against the child of God. So listen to me. Don't be afraid. There's, there are Christians only they're scared of, of witchcraft workers. I'll tell you. They're scared that somebody is going to do something, you know, go to some art. Uh, Fortune teller, witchcraft worker, and, and they can work some. And so, oh, Pastor, I'm scared. Pastor, oh, please pray for me, Pastor. They're working against me. They're, they're trying to get me, Pastor. Yeah, the devil is alive. No witchcraft worker, with all the machinations, can prevail against you. The gates of hell shall not be. No scheme, no counsel, whatever they come up with, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's what the word says. And that's what Jesus is saying when he says, The gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. I'm building these people. I'm raising them. The gates of hell cannot prevail against them. Meaning, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against them in judgment shall be condemned. Amen. Somebody said nothing will work. Nothing, nothing will work. Nothing will work. Nothing nothing will work. work. Because you and I, we are the church of Jesus Christ. We are the people of God. Yes. Amen. We are stones. We are strong. Yes. You're not weak. You're strong. Amen. Amen. And the Lord says, once you remain on me, and you'll be rooted in me as the large rock. And you're a stone as well. Man, there ain't nothing that can prevail against you. Amen. Nothing. Now, you might get some setbacks here and there because even Peter himself denied the Lord three times. That's right. 
Amen. But he was not defeated because he came back strong. Stronger than ever. Oh, hallelujah. A stone will always be a stone. I said a stone will always be a stone. Amen. Amen. Stone will always be stone, folks. Amen. You can get battered and bruised and there and there, but listen, you're going to always come back stronger than ever. Then upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We are going places, folks. The church of Jesus Christ cannot be defeated. We are on the move. You cannot be defeated because you are part of the church. You are right. part of what God is building. And you will not be defeated. You are coming forward victoriously. Amen. 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 No matter what is flown at you, no matter what is flown at me, we're going to come through it. We're going to come through it time after time yes. after time. And watch this. We're on the move. We're on the move. We're moving forward. We're pressing forward. The kingdom of God suffered violence. Violence. And violence take it in by force. We are pressing forward. We are moving forward. And whatever situation that we face, we're going to press through that. And we're going to come over on the other side. Because we are the people of God. And we cannot be defeated. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Praise God. Lord, we thank you even now. We give you glory and we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. That we cannot be defeated. Yes, Lord. We will not be defeated. Because God you are building us. You have called us. You saved us. You have washed us in your blood. Hallelujah. Lord God and we thank you. For salvation today. Thank you, Lord, for salvation today. Thank you that we are saved. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Thank you for what you've made us. We are what we are because of you. We are what we are because of you. And we give you praise even now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to encourage yourself even now. Amen. From my you speak to yourself right now and say, This too shall pass because I'm, I'm coming through this. Yes, Lord. I'm coming, coming over on the other side because I'm a child of God and I'm victorious. Thanks be unto God who always gives us the victory. Who always gives us the victory. We thank you for victory. Thank you for victory. Even right now, wherever you are, I want you to begin. If you're a child of God, I want you to begin to thank God for your victory. Even now. Over whatever situation you're in, whatever, amen, is happening in your life right now, begin to give God praise for your victory. You are indeed coming through victorious. The victory is yours. You will not be defeated. You're not going down. Lord, I thank you for the victory. We give you praise for the victory right now. We give you praise for the victory right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just give me praise for the victory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For a matter of fact, you begin. I don't know what's happening in your life, but, but you begin to list those things in your life that, that, that right now that is hot on the fire right now in your life that you need. Maybe you've been trusting God and you've been praying about and you've been asking God, Lord, help me in this area. Lord, help me with this or help me with that. I want you right now to list those areas before the Lord and thank you right now. Amen. They're not pray, but just thanking God. Whether it's in your body, you need healing in your body, whether it's, hey, it's finances, whether whatever is happening, a situation that needs technical right now, wherever you are, just thank
you right now. Amen. Begin to speak victory over your life. Hallelujah. Speak victory over your family. Speak victory right now. Lord, we need you. We speak victory. The gates of hell cannot prevail. The gates of hell will not prevail. Oh, we declare victory right now. We speak the victory of God right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yes, God is able to do. God is able to do. Hallelujah.
the comprehensive blessings of God rest and abide on your people even now. That Lord, regardless of circumstances, they will walk in your blessing. For a matter of fact, your blessings will, will oh God, come after them and overtake them. They'll be blessed going out and blessed coming in. This is what I speak over your people even now. In Jesus' name, bless your people, Lord. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen, praise God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. As you um, gift to the Lord, amen. Just go to the website, those in the building, amen, you know what to do. God bless you now as you give to the Lord. And God also bless you and have a great week. And also join us next week, same time. Amen. Same place. Praise God. God bless you now. And